Hey guys, it's another week, which means another new song to chart out, and as promised this week, I am going to work on helping you all develop how to play bass while singing. Before we get to that point, though, we're going to work on a, developing a new chart, and I'm going to try something a little different this week. I'm going to actually show you the parts day by day. But first things first, we got to listen to it. For all you brand new fans out there, this is my personal favorite. We're going to listen to the song and then start to analyze. This is Millstone off of The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me. Kind of a interesting song, but you hear a lot of repeating patterns. So I'm going to plug in and turn on, and we can start the chart and start looking at 
the different parts. <clears throat> All right, well, I hope you can hear me, because if I turn it up much louder, it's just going to start getting all crackly-wackly. So, this song, I think we can agree, has a few basic components. There's obviously a chorus. Take me out tonight, whoa. There's the verse, and then there's that little awkward thing that sounds like the verse, but it's before you go into the pre-chorus, I'm calling that it's before you go into the chorus after the verse so I'm calling it the pre-chorus you got the bridge and the verse riff is basically the intro so I called verse one intro slash verse one because we get into that one basic pattern and then go straight into the song now you saw me counting it out the meters in four and you saw me kind of count it out at the end, because the intro and the outro are the verse riff, we'll call it, because it is very much a bass riff. It's a repeating four-measure thing. So we're going to start from the beginning and see how many times in the for verse 1 it repeats, and it should repeat the same amount of time for verse 2. Four. This is the first time through the verse with two. I used to be such a bloody example. I used to be so original. I used to care. I was being careful. Make sure I showed to those that I used to sleep without a single. Okay, so before we let the chorus play out and play through, because right now we're just trying to figure out how many times the parts repeat. So for that main intro slash verse riff, we counted out that it's a repeating four measure thing that repeats three times. So we're underneath intro slash verse one, go to table, insert table, four columns, one row, okay. And the note next to it is repeat three times. So we put our little semicolon there. Now, the way that this riff goes is that you have two measures of the same chord and then it goes into two measures of the next chord. Now, I know this song pretty well, but again, go to Ultimate Guitar, get the chord chart, and I'm telling you that the two chords used in this verse riff are F sharp wrong, and then we put F sharp as the first beat for measure one and then rhythm slashes for the corresponding measures and then start of measure three we put an A because that is the next chord that is used and we put corresponding rhythm slashes and our semicolon end repeat sign. Now the pre-chorus is another four measure thing and it follows kind of the same pattern as the intro and verse. It's a four measure progression but it only goes through it once. So we only need a one column of we only need one row of a four column table and we put E that's the first chord that's used and then rhythm slashes throughout the rest of the two measures and then D and we have our pre-chorus now I'm gonna sh like I said, I'm going to show you how to play these parts before we go any further into them. Now, it's kind of like a power chord 
formation that we that I shown you. You got your root and then two measures up, one string above the power chord. So for the intro slash first one chord progression, it goes like this. Starting on nine is your F sharp on the A string, and then eleven on the D string is your C sharp, the fifth. If when you get to the A chord, you keep the pinky or whatever finger you're using on the 11th fret of the D string C sharp there, but you take the 9th fret F sharp away, and you just play an open string. So it looks like this. Now, making sure you play this right rhythmically is key. One of the things that I hope you picked up on when I was counting it out was that you hit the D string on two and four. So it's like this. One and two and three and four and 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 two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and two and three and four and now you use the same rhythmic pattern of you know one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and when you get to the pre-chorus and once again you're using a power chord shape seventh fret E on the A string to ninth fret B on the D string. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then down to the D, the fifth fret D, seventh fret A on the corresponding strings. Four and one and two and three and four and, and that's how you do the verse and the pre-chorus. So we're gonna play it through the second chorus Let's play through to the second chorus just so we can hear it repeat again and make sure that we get the repeats and the measures right. This is chorus one. So now we know that verse 2 and the pre-chorus are just like the intro slash verse 1 and pre-chorus -pre 1. So we can just quite simply copy our table for verse 1 under verse 2, ditto with the pre-chorus. Put the same note in there for verse 2. Repeat three times. So tomorrow, which is Tuesday, we will discuss the choruses.